Call the meeting of the uh, City Council Finance Committee to order for Monday evening, May 18th, 2015. Mr. Chairman. At approximately about, just about 7, 10 p.m. Councilor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, before we start the agenda item, we have the Cub Scouts from PAC 2000 and attorney Michael Darsh, uh, who's their leader. And I thought it'd be appropriate to have the Cub Scouts come before us and we're gonna recognize them and we have a citation. Sure. Mr. Chairman, as you know, uh, Attorney Dosh, Mike Dosh, is uh, uh, really a, 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 great, a great institution here in the city of Brockton, a former Marine. Once you're a Marine, you're always a Marine. But um, he is dedicated, and the other leaders have dedicated themselves to really uh, better these, uh, these children here. And uh, I wanted to read you a citation uh, on behalf of the city council, if I could. And I want to first of all thank you for being in Cub Scouts, and thank you for being here tonight. It's great to see all of you. City of Brockton official citation. Be it known that the Brockton City Council hereby extends its congratulations to the Cub Scout PAC 2000 members and leaders in recognition of your dedication and commitment to our community. And be it further known that the City Council extends best wishes to each of you for continued success. That this citation be duly signed by the President of the City Council, Mr. Dennis Ian Airy is the president, mm -hmm. and attested to in a copy, therefore, transmitted by the city clerk, Mr. Tony Zioli, and it was offered by myself. I'm a city councilor at large. My name is Robert Sullivan, and it's dated today, May 18th, and I want to thank you, and I want to welcome you. Well, folks, thanks very much for having us here tonight. Uh, we're all big supporters of uh, Mayor Carpenter and the City Council. I see Mr. Cruz there my, from my ward. Good to see you, Mr. Cruz. We're up on our Pearl Street at the church up there. We meet every Wednesday night. The mayor has very graciously honored Great. to uh, offer, I should say, to treat the boys to pizza at George's Cafe tonight. He evidently has a tab up there. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for that. But uh, seriously, <laughs> well, the, well, the chief might have one as well. But I, I can assure you uh, that uh, Jack Sherman and, and Deb Nicholas and myself, uh, we take uh, our roles very, very seriously because we recognize that these boys are the future of America, or certainly uh, the future of the city of Brockton. We appreciate very much you inviting us up here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So cute. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Councilor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just before we, um, before we begin, Councilors, just with our agenda, just so everybody knows, um, the first one through nine, we're going to uh, meet the uh, recruits that we have going into the police academy. And then we have uh, our second page, which is containing uh, items that were uh, put to the Finance Committee from the City Council meeting. But when you get to page, the third page and the last, items number 22 through 28 are the postponements that we've had um, over the last uh, few meetings in regards to items that, that were before us at Finance and then and sent to a different uh, Finance Committee meeting. So I just wanted everybody to, to know that so that when uh, you get after item number uh, 21, that those are those particular items right there. And I don't believe, um, I'm sure Council Barnes is on her way because we still don't know when Congressman Lynch is going to be coming before us as, as well. So I just wanted to, uh, to bring, that, bring everybody up to speed on that. Also, I just want to make mention that Council Stewart contacted me early this morning. Unfortunately, he has a, a commitment with work and did not foresee himself uh, getting here uh, this evening. I know Council Monahan called me um, just late this afternoon and he was called back into work and he was going to try to be here at some point, but he wasn't sure on that uh, Do you know who either. Filed this one? So with that Before being said, um, Madam Clerk, we'll start with uh, item number one. Appointment, Joe Miranda to the rank of police officer in the Brockton Police Department invited Joe Miranda. Good evening, Mr. Miranda. How are you? Good. Very good. Welcome. And you're already on your way into the police academy, so we appreciate the fact that you're going to be uh, serving as a police officer here in the, uh, the city of Brockton. Councilors, any uh, questions for Mr. Miranda? I have a question. question. Councilor Dubois. Congratulations. Thank you. So question. do you live in Brockton? Yes, I do. Ha did you grow up here? 
I'm a graduate of Brockton High and also a graduate of Massachusetts. Wonderful. Have you always wanted to be a police officer? Yes, I would. Well, I'm really happy that you were able to fulfill this, uh, this goal. So thank you very much. Thank, thank, thank you. you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor. Councilors? Motion recommend favor. Second. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Recommend uh, favorably back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council. Item number two, Madam Clerk. Appointment Jonathan Correa to the rank of police officer in the Brockton Police Department. Invited Jonathan Correa. Good evening, Jonathan. How are you? Good evening, sir. Good. How are you? And congratulations to you as you become a uh, police officer as you go through the uh, academy the next uh, several weeks. Thank you, sir. Councilors, any questions for uh, Jonathan? I'm asking similar questions probably of everyone, Mr. Yeah, yeah, Chairman, yeah, if that's okay. You may do so. Councilor, go right ahead. So what's your connection to Brockton? My connection to Brockton, uh, I moved here, I'd say, five years ago. I originally grew up in Quincy. Great. I graduated high school in 2010 from Quincy High, and I figured I'd, I'd move out here to be closer to Bridgewater State University, which is where I want. And how do you like it? I love it. Well, we're happy to have you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council. Councilor Stadinsky, then Councilor Sullivan. What, what, week, what week are you and your classmates in, in the academy, please? Uh, we just started the third week today. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Sir. Thank you, Council. Council Sullivan. Thank you. Well, congratulations. And uh, obviously, you're a smart guy because the city of presidents is always trumped by the city of champions, right? <laughs> Quincy's always trumped by Brian. Yes, sir. Thank you. Got it, sir. <laughs> Any other? To recommend favor. Second. 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 Motion been made and seconded to send back to, to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Item number three, Madam Clerk. Appointment Evans Joseph to the rank of police officer in the Brockton Police Department. Invited jo Evans Joseph. Good evening, Evans. How are you? Good evening, sir. Again, welcome. Congratulations as you go through the academy in the next several weeks to become a member of the police, uh, Brockton Police Department. Councilors, Council Dubois. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Evans. How are you? How are you doing, ma'am? Pretty good. What's your connection to Brockton? I've uh, lived here for over 15 years now. Wonderful. And uh, fell in love with the city, the town, and the people of you know, Brockton. Uh, this is basically a, a home for me. Great. Well, we're really happy to have you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Any other? Any recommendation? Second. Thank you. Thank you. Motion been made and, and second to send back to the full City Council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full City Council. Thank you. Thank you Appreciate sir. it very Thank much. You. Item number four. Appointment Frank Kulagis to the rank of police officer in the Brockton Police Department. Invited Frank Kulagis. Good evening, Frank. How are you? I'm good. How Again, about congratulations you? to you as you become a member of the Brockton Police Department as you go through the academy. Good luck. Thank Council you very much. Hi, how are you, Mr. Collages? I'm doing good, ma'am. So what is your connection to Brockton? Actually, I've been living in Brockton since 2002. Wonderful. Uh, I used to live in uh, Florida since I moved to here, so I've been living in Brockton, in Brockton for my whole entire life. And I graduated from Massasoit Community College. Excellent. Well, thank you very much and welcome. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, you Council. Any other questions? Make a favor recommendation. Second. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Go back to the full City Council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full City Council with a favor recommendation. Thank you and congratulations. Good luck. Yes, sir. Item number five, Madam Clerk. Appointment David Liu to the rank of police officer in the Brockton Police Department. Invited David Liu. Good evening, David. How are you? Doing well, sir. And congratulations to you as you go through the Police Academy and become a member of the Brockton Police Department. Good luck. Yes, sir. Council Dubois. Thank you. So, Mr. Liu, are you a veteran? Yes. yes that was a question I wanted to ask everybody. And um, so thank you for your service. You. And what's your connection to Brockton? I am. I've been I'm born and raised in Brockton. Went Wonderful. through the school system and wanted to serve back to the community. Well, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Chairman. Thank Motion you, Council. Motion to recommend favorable. Second. 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 Motion for made and second to go back to the full city council. All in favor? Post goes back to the full city council. Favor recommendation. Thank you. Thank Congratulations. You, Item number six. Appointment, Isaiah Callahan to the rank of police officer in the Brockton Police Department. Invited, Isaiah Callahan. Good evening, Isaiah. Same to you. I want to Good wish you the very best of luck. Enjoy the academy, and we look forward to seeing you out on the street as a member of the Brockton Police Department. Thank you, Thank sir. you. Councilor Dubois. Thank you. Mr. Callahan, thank you very much for being here this evening. And are you a veteran? I am, ma'am. Wonderful. Thank you for your service. And what's your connection to Brockton? Uh, I've lived in Brockton since I was nine, and I also look forward to giving back to the community. I love it. Thank you very much for your service, Thank and you. congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Student Council Officer Callahan. Councilor Stanley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Pardon me? Student Council Officer Callahan. You're listed as living in Stoughton presently, are you? Yes, sir. All right. How long have you been over there? Uh, for about a year. About a year. And you're moving back in? I am, sir. Okay. I'm currently moving right now within the next week. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councilor. Questions? Any other Mr. questions? Recommend favorably. Thank you. 
Motion has been made and seconded to uh, send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Item number seven. Appointment Ryan Cork to the rank of police officer in the Brockton Police Department. Invited Ryan Cork. Good evening, Ryan. How are you? Good evening, sir. How are you? Congratulations to you as you become a member of the Brockton uh, Police Department, and good luck as you go through the uh, the academy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councilor Dubois. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, Mr. Quirk, thank you for being here tonight, and congratulations you, on your job and thank your position. You, are you a veteran? Yes, ma'am. And how, what's your connection to Brockton? Uh, born and raised in Brockton. Wonderful. Went right. to the school system and just looking to give back to the community. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank Motion you. To recommend favorably. Second. Second. Motion been made and seconded and sent back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you and good luck. Thank you, sir. Item number eight, Madam Clerk. Appointment, Jose Rodriguez to the rank of police officer in the Brockton Police Department. Invited, Jose Rodriguez. Jose, how are you? Good, how are you, sir? Good luck and best wishes to you as you go through the academy and become a member Thank of the you. Brockton Police Department. Thank you, sir. Council Dubois. Mr. Rodriguez, congratulations. Thank you, And thank you for being here tonight. Are you a veteran? Yes, ma'am. Thank you for your service. And what's your connection to Brockton? I've been in Brockton since 1998. Great. Went to Brockton High. After graduating Brockton High, I joined the Marines, and now I'm back to Brockton. Well, we're happy to have you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Man. Chairman. You're welcome, Council. To recommend favorably. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to go back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council. Favorable recommendation. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Uh, Madam Clerk, number nine. Appointment, Derek Scully to the rank of police officer in the Brockton Police Department. Invited Derek Scully. Good evening, Derek. How are you? Good. How are you? Sir? Congratulations, and wish you the best as you go through the police academy to come become a member of the police of, a police officer here through our police department. Appreciate it, Council Dubois. Hello, Mr. Skelly. How are you? Good, ma'am. How are you? I'm wonderful, and I want to congratulate you and thank you for being here tonight. Um, I'm just going to ask you the same questions. Are you a veteran? Yes, ma'am. Wonderful. So thank you for your service. You. And um, what's your connection to Brockton? I'm born and raised on the east side, ma'am. Uh, went through. So Brockton. I'm your state representative. <laughs> I think I am. That's great. Okay. <laughs> uh, born and raised, uh, went through all Brockton schools, served in JROTC, um, joined the Marine Corps, and decided to come back home. Well, thank you very much. You have a great night, and congratulations. Thank, thank you, Mr. You, Chairman. Council Studensky. Yes, uh, Student Officer Scully, how are you? Good, sir. How are you? Very well, thank you. You're in your seventh week. Where, where are you uh, and your cohorts going to the academy? What's the location? Randolph, sir. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Council. Any other questions, Council? Motion to recommend favorably. Second. Second. Motion has been made and second to send back to the full City Council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full City Council with a favorable recommendation. Gentlemen, your names will be read next uh, Tuesday evening. Monday's a holiday, but Tuesday when the City Council um, convenes at 8 p.m., um, your names will be read and be confirmed. We do want to thank you for being uh, a part of the process. We really appreciate it. And uh, just seeing you sitting there in that row, uh, I see some fine, fine, excellent talent. So best wishes to you, really. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Madam Clerk, item number 10. Appointment, Robert Miller of Brockton as a member of the Cable Advisory Board for a three-year term ending May 2018, invited Robert Miller. I love it, that is the way it should be. Hi, Mr. Miller, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. And you're being appointed to the uh, Cable Advisory uh, Board. Any, uh, anything you'd like to say? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Motion Council. recommend favorably. Second. Second. Motion's been made and second to send back to the full City Council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council with favorable recommendation. Thank you, and thank you for serving as well. Item number 11. Appointment, Mozart St. Cyr, 104 Tribute Street, Brockton, as a member of the Cable Advisory Board for a three-year term ending May 2018. Invited Mozart St. Cyr. Is Mozart uh, St. Cyr here? Okay. Councilors? Yeah, but I'm going to see, we'll give him a little time. If we could put that off until the end of the agenda. We can do Good that. Idea. Uh, we'll go to item number, um, number 12, Councilors, um, Madam Clerk. Appointment, Reginald Thomas of Brockton as a member of the Planning Board for five-year term ending May 2020. Invited Reginald Thomas. Mr. Thomas, how are you? Good evening, sir. Good evening. Anything you'd like to say before the Council? I'd just like to be a continued service to my city. Okay. Motion to recommend favorably. Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? 
Goes back to the full city council in favor of recommendation. Thank you and thank you for serving as well. Item number 13, Madam Clerk. Order a transfer of $9,521 from the Veteran Service Purchase of Services of $8,321 in Veteran Service Overtime 1200 to the Veteran Service Goods and Supplies in order to fund the anticipated needs of Brockton veterans for the remainder of the fiscal year 2015. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, and David Farrell, Director. Good evening, Mr. Farrell. How are you? Good evening, sir. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too, sir. Pleasure. Any uh, comment? Or well, this is to uh, uh, cover veterans' cash benefits uh, for the end of the fiscal year uh, through June. Uh, this will help us uh, cover uh, our projected expenses. Very good. Motion for a favorable recommendation. Second. second. Motion's been made and seconded to go back to the full city council with a favorable recommendation. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. You and if much, I could Mr. just uh, remind all right of our ahead. Brockton residents of uh, the Memorial Day Parade next Monday, 10 a.m. We're starting from the uh, War Memorial Building. And, of course, everyone's welcome, especially veterans. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Item number 14, Madam Clerk. Order a transfer of 200000 from the Personnel Department Personal Employee Benefits Unemployment Compensation to the Police Department Capital Projects in order to pay for the first year cost of software, hardware, and installation for this sh shot spotter system expansion. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, John Crowley, Police Chief, and J Jack Pontius, shot spotter representative. Good evening, Mayor. How are you? Very good. Mr. President, if it uh, would please the council, Mr. Pontius is here uh, representing uh, the shot spotter sure. company, and uh, he would like to make a brief presentation to the council, and then we'll all, all be available for questions to Great. follow. That's fine. Appreciate it. Come come forward, Mr. Pontius. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Mr. President. Pleasure. Yep, yep. Feel free. We won't, we won't bite you. We're all... <laughs> feel Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, thank you, Councillors, for your uh, indulgence. Uh, my name is Jack Pontius. I'm the director of the Northeast Region for ShotSpotter. I have been with the company now for over 10 years, so I've seen some quite dramatic growth from just a couple of cities where we were deployed in uh, over 10 years ago to uh, upwards of about 90 communities that we serve today. In Massachusetts alone, we serve seven cities. Um, many cities uh, uh, that have been with us for years now, including Boston, Springfield, uh, Worcester uh, just came on board uh, last year, uh, Fall River, New Bedford. Uh, many of these communities have coverage areas that uh, range between 4 and, and uh, 12 square miles. Um, our largest community throughout the country is, uh, that uses ShotSpotter today is in Washington, D.C. They've been with us since 2005, and uh, they have about 20 square miles of coverage now. Uh, I was also here for the uh, initial deployment here in Brockton uh, a few years back, so we have piloted the system here. Um, the good news is the, uh, the system is, uh, and the company has, we've changed our business model to some degree where we've made it uh, a lot easier for uh, tier two and tier three communities that have the same kinds of gunfire problems that you know, the big cities have to get uh, more coverage like Washington DC and New York City, who by the way, they just went on uh, live with ShotSpotter last year as well with about 15 square miles and are tripling the size of their coverage area this year. Uh, and what I mean by um, easier way of getting involved is that the, um, the system is now being sold as a subscription. Uh, an annual fee pays for the entire service, and that includes the alerts, the investigation aspects of it. Uh, all the data comes through to uh, a number of different portals so that the police can respond very effectively and efficiently uh, and precisely. And I do have a demonstration of uh, the actual software that I can show you. But I did want to kind of give you a little shot spotter 101 first for those who have not been exposed to this in the past. Um, so that being said, the system actually works as a network of sensors. These are acoustic sensors that are placed up on buildings and higher structures that listen for anything that goes bang or boom throughout the city, throughout the shot spotter zone. And we and take that information and send it back to a location server out in California where we manage the service. That happens in milliseconds. We have an incident review center 
that operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week. These folks listen to this data as it comes in and qualify and vet this data so that when we send it through to the responding police officers, the detectives, and those other folks that the chief has you know, decided should get this information, they get this information on their computer laptops or on their cell phones or on their iPads in, in about 30 seconds. So the response time has been accelerated quite dramatically. And again, it's very, very precise. We're talking about the front yard and the backyard, out on the street. We can give you the speed and direction of a drive-by shooting, for example. We can tell you if there's multiple shooters. We can give you an indication of the types of weapons that are being fired. Information that heretofore is otherwise unobtainable. And one of the real problems that we're seeing out there throughout the country, not just in the big cities, because it's a problem that is occurring everywhere, is that only about 20% or so of gunfire ever gets called in to traditional services, 911 services. That means there's about 80% of the gunfire that's occurring in these neighborhoods that the police don't know about. And that's pretty dramatic when you think about the extent to which the community is being harassed and terrorized in these neighborhoods, and the police just don't have the data to respond to it. Well, the dynamic gets completely turned upside down when you deploy the shot spotter system because we're able to now provide this data to responding police officers, again, very precisely, very quickly, very accurately, and we give you that 100% ground truth. So that's basically how it works, and a little bit of background. Uh, any questions up to this point? Councilors, any? Do you want to see a quick demonstration of the software? Uh, sure. Or? Yep. Sure. Why not? So this is the alert console that is the, what we call a uh, portal that the patrol officers will see in their squad car. So this is an example of a real incident that occurred in one of our communities. And what we'll provide them is a dot on the map. And we use basically Bing Maps with uh, rocked and parcel data layered on top of it. And we're able to provide bird's eye view so that Responding officers can see that information from a variety of tactical viewpoints. They can zoom in, zoom out, and again, they can respond to that location with the appropriate tactical force. And it's also an officer safety issue, too, because this, if it were a multiple gunshot, which this happens to be, and I'll let you listen to it, because we do provide the audio. Here's a multiple gunshot event occurring between these two houses, right by that tree. And it's you know, obviously a pretty dramatic gunshot event, not just a single gunshot. Not that a single gunshot is not important, but mm. the responding officer will want to know what he's coming into, the severity of the event. And just to give you another location, here's one uh, out on the street. Seven rounds. We can also do a single round, obviously. The, uh, let's see what that sounds like. Here's a single gunshot on top of a building. So one of the interesting things about this that we just found out, too, was like in New York City, they um, just deployed shot fighters, I mentioned. They were pretty convinced that they didn't have a problem with automatic weapons. <laughs> and they also couldn't believe when shot spotter was deployed in the first few weeks that, that only 20% of their gunfire was even being reported through 911. So in the first two weeks, Commissioner Bratton went public with their results. They detected on 60. Mr. Some Chairman, excuse me, excuse me. could you ask him to uh, speak into the microphone? Well, can you speak into the microphone? Yeah, then they can, yeah. For the people at home, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Sure, thank you. Um, in New York City, in the first few weeks that they deployed, the uh, number of gunshots that they detected in their coverage area, their shot spotter zone, was about 60 events. And how many gunshots do you think actually of those 60 events were reported through 911? 
about 12. So they were pretty astonished as well, and they've already are looking to expand their coverage area into 28 new precincts, and we're hoping we get the opportunity to expand the system here in Brockton as well. Very good. Council, is any, uh, Councilor Azak? Good evening, sir. Um, I have a question. You mentioned an annual fee. What is the annual fee that is um, charged? So when we uh, deployed the initial system in Brockton, I'll give just a little historical. Uh, we actually sold the equipment, the servers, the software, professional services. It was purchased by a uh, grant, and it's, it was a very expensive proposition. It's about 250 to 300,000 a square mile plus annual maintenance contracts. Well, we have essentially turned the business model upside down and now only provide the data as a service where we don't actually sell any equipment anymore. We just provide the data. And the annual subscription fee runs anywhere from 50 to $60,000 a year per, uh, per square mile. Hmm. And that's all inclusive of all services. Yes, ma'am. Councilor Dubois. Um, so what do you mean? I just want to drill. Was, was Councilor I, I believe she, you would. You. Uh, yes. I apologize. Okay. Great. Yes. Um, so I just have some questions about the subscription. Is it, a, is it a contract base? Could we see a copy of the contract? I'd like to see the contract. Yes, it is a contract based annual contract. And then there, we have cities that have contracted with us for multiple years. How many years has the city of Brockton contracted for, with you? Um, the first initial deployment when the city of Brockton acquired the system. That was with Jim Harrington, right? Pardon me? Was that with Mayor Harrington? Yes. Yeah, okay. So that was a, a contract that we'd entered into uh, probably like six, seven years ago. And then we have an um, annual maintenance contract to provide support for that, for that system uh, on an annual basis. And how much is that, the annual basis contract? About $35,000 $35, a year. 35000 And so um, that covers just a, what the downtown of Brockton or what? what? The central quarter, yes. And so how is that going to play into the new um, information? Are we going to maintain our own um, equipment for one section of the city and then expand upon it for the rest of the city? Or what is it going to now cover? That's a great question. Uh, we, we've already converted the first square mile, right, that was the initial deployment, over to our subscription model. And we're just going to be extending sensors and extending that array to cover uh, whatever the chief and the mayor end up deciding is the coverage. Did you pay us for area. that since we own the equipment? Sorry? Since we, since we invested around $300,000 and we owned the equipment, did you pay us for that or give no. us a discount? So you just took back the equipment? No, we, we, you still own the equipment. Okay, okay. Um, and then what do you do with the information? Like how, this is why I'd like to see a copy of the contract. Could I ask, um, uh, has it been signed yet? No. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask Mr. Nessarella a question after this one. Okay. Wait, to you. I just have one more question for you. Talk to me a, a little bit, um, and when I say a little bit, I'd like you to go into detail. Talk to me about the information that you gather, how you gather the information, and then what happens with that information. Do you sell it? Do you share it with anyone outside the city? What do you do with the information pertaining to Brockton's gunfire? So, uh, yes, that's a, another great question. Each sensor, and there's about 15 to 18 sensors per square mile, uh, use cellular technology to communicate the incident data back to our location server and review center and all that happens in milliseconds uh, the review center takes uh, on average about 30 seconds to qualify and vet that alert before it gets sent through to uh, Brockton straight to their patrol cars and into the dispatch center and again on mobile platforms as well um, we don't sell that data to any other uh, agencies or anything like that we we certainly respect Do you share it uh, we only share it with Brockton. Okay. Um, it, does it go over a police scanner, or no. how does that? How is that communicated from the from what you're calling the center, technology center, to the city? How is it? It's all web-based, so it's all communications over the internet. Over the internet. Mm -hmm. How can other people hook into that information? Uh, they can't. The only Brockton would be able to access the information that we send through. It's all encrypted and all the data is backed up on our servers. All right, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, may I ask Council, Mr. Nessarella a question? Mr. Attorney Nessarella, just a question for Councilor Dubois. 
<clears throat> Hi, City Solicitor Nessarella. Thank you for being here. Um, will this information be uh, subject to, uh, it isn't called Freedom of Information Act request. What is it called here in Massachusetts? Public documents request. Is it subject to public documents request? <clears throat> Perhaps the contract. Huh? Perhaps limited to the contract. I don't know what that means. The contract entering into with this organization. I still don't know what it means, so I'm going to rephrase my oh, question. First off, I'd like a copy of the contract. Can I get a copy of the contract? Yes. Second, um, say in December of every year, I put in a letter asking for a list of all the shots reported in the city. I know since it came through um, this gentleman's business that it's possible to give me that information. Is that going to be provided if I put in a letter of freedom? I'm of unsure. I'd have, to, I'd have to give pause and really think about right, that. That's because fair part of police safety and, and where crime waves may be and not may be. I think that may be privileged, but I'm unsure. I, I, I would think, like to Yeah, I appreciate like to you. That. I appreciate you looking into that because I, I think I would agree with you if it was like in a small span of time, but maybe if there was a policy that as long as the shot was so many X number of time old, Right. that you'd be willing to give that information up because I think that that is really critical for open communication and dialogue about where the crime's happening and I'm seeing a little bit of pushback from the city actually wanting to share that information. So I think the more information that we can share to the public, the better because knowledge is power and open government makes good government. So thank you very much and I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Council. And Council, I apologize because Mr. Uh, Attorney Fizzer Phil Nazarello was not an invited guest, so I should ask the Council if it was... Uh, okay for him to uh, speak and I, and I didn't do that so I apologize for that um, Mr. Uh, point is anything else that you want to or any other questions for <coughs> Council Sullivan I do. thank you Mr. Chairman thank you sir for being here and thank you for giving us this uh, this information I, I believe if my memory serves me right when Mike Sullivan the former DA and US Attorney and ATF director I think it was under his watch that we were able to benefit from the grant so I'm, I'm glad to see that it's been utilized and it's been successful I do have a question for the for the police chief if I could Chief, good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good, thank you. Chief, do, do we have uh, statistics um, relative to since, since shot spot has been utilized in Brockton from the start date to current date, how many arrests have been made relative to firearms? Do we, are we, do we have the ability to track that to see what our success rate is? I think we'd be able to produce that, yes. I don't have that tonight. No, no, I wasn't asking you tonight, but I was just wondering, is it, because that way it's kind of a, it's also, I mean, it's a public safety endeavor, but it's also a smart business to see that if, if for the money we're paying, I think it's money well spent to see what the benefit is. So is that something you could generate for us? Yes. I appreciate that. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Thank Councilor. You. Councilor Cruz. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, this may be from Mr. Conner, or maybe the Chief knows this. So this $200,000 is first year cost of the, software, hardware, and installation. So this would be for fiscal year that we're currently in? Or? Uh, the the uh, contract would be executed this year. It's for 12 months, and so it would carry us through to almost the end of next fiscal year. And then the fiscal 16 budget has the second year appropriation. It hasn't been submitted yet, but the mayor is intending but to so the second year. I mean, it's a huge tool, I know, for the police, right. and to expand it has been, will be really important. Uh, we won't be sitting here a year from now saying we can't afford to, to do another year or? Well, we've got this year, so we've got 12, 12 yeah. paid for with this. The budget, when it's submitted, unless the mayor changes his mind, and I don't think he will on this, this is important to him, right. will contain $200,000 for the 12 months following that. And then the third year, well, that's a new fiscal year, we'll have to appropriate. So it will be another $200,000? I mean, this is, I mean, the first year usually is a little more expensive because you have to do the, uh, some of the hardware. Yeah, it's, 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 two, it's two years worth of cost is $400,000. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome, uh, Councillor. Councillor, yeah, I'm going to make a motion in favor of recommendation. Second. 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 Motion's been made and seconded that this item will go back to the full City Council with favorable recommendation. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full City Council with favorable recommendation. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Item number 15, Madam Clerk. Order, transfer $2,000 from the Parking Authority Personal Services part-time salaries other than overtime to Parking Authority Purchase of Services Electricity in order to fund the shortfall due to higher than anticipated costs for fiscal 2015. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, and Robert Malley, Executive Director. Good evening, Mr. Malley. How are you? Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Good. Thank you. Anything uh, you want to say? or? No, it's just uh, we level funded the electricity this year. This is a uh, cost overrun. Uh, which I 
thank you for uh, accepting this as a late uh, file because uh, we didn't have the electric bills in until very recently. Very good. Thank you. Councilor DiNapoli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Mr. Malley, how are you tonight? Good. How are you? Question. Uh, how are we doing with the, uh, the cost of uh, when you were here the last time, you were going to uh, the cost of the uh, uh, to look study. into the parking garage in the parking downtown? Mm -hmm. The parking study? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The parking study has gone out to bid. Uh, bids are due back the 26th. The 26th of this 26th month? The 26th of this month. So okay. I will have more information when I see you at budget time. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Councilors, any other questions? Move for a favorable recommendation. Motion. Second. Motion been made and seconded that we send this back to the full City Council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full City Council. Favorable recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Malley. Item number 16, Madam Clerk. For a transfer of 17200 from the Parking Authority Meter Reserve, 7200 Personal services, part-time salaries other than overtime, 10000 To the Parking Authority Snow Removal, 17200 In order to fund the shortfall in snow removal fiscal 2015, invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, and Robert Malley, Executive Director. Good evening, Mr. Malley. Good evening Nice again. to see you again. <laughs> Pleasure. Any... Uh, now, this is the end of the bills for the fiscal year when we got here uh, at the end of February needing to pay some. Uh, we still had a couple of bills outstanding. This is the end of the bills for the endless winter that we just had. Motion to recommend favorably. Second. second. On the motion. Motion has been made and second on the motion. Council yeah. Sullivan. Mr. Malley, good evening. Good evening. Do we know what the, the total amount was for uh, snow removal? $204,000. Twenty-four grand. Within a couple, of, uh, a couple of bucks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Any other questions, concerns, Councilors? Um, motion was made and seconded. Send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank Mallory. you. Item number 17, Madam Clerk. Order appropriation of two million twenty-five thousand seven hundred twenty-four from available funds, Brockton's Chapter 90 apportionment for fiscal year 2016 to the Highway Transportation Project Funds Fiscal 16 Chapter 90 projects to provide funding for the purpose of the design and construction costs necessary for approved projects. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, and Lawrence Riley, DPW Commissioner. Good evening, uh, Mr. Commissioner. How are you? Good, Councilor. Very good. Good to see you. And Same any uh, any comment you want to make in regards to this? Well, uh, this is just our annual um, the the, the uh, fees that we usually get for the Chapter 90 to take care of our roads. So for road construction, City Councilors, as you know, Chapter 90 money comes back each and every year, and I think we probably are seeing just about the same, uh, maybe a little bit more than what we've seen over the last year or two. But in regards to that, I mean, it's um, just so people at home realize that when we talk Chapter 90 monies, this is the money that. It gets appropriated. Hopefully, we're able to do some work in uh, every every little bit of every part of the section of the city of Brockton and everybody's wards. And, and people, I want people to understand that because I think right now we're all getting calls endlessly about road work and road construction. But we're doing the very best we can with what we have before us. And I appreciate uh, all that you're trying to do and putting together a comprehensive list so that we can keep this ongoing. So. Um, I made my little spiel, and if someone didn't like it, that's too bad, but I did. Any, anyhow, Councilor DiNapoli. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Good evening, Mr. Raleigh. How are you good doing? Good evening. Good. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, give you kudos that the good news is the, for all those listeners out there, the lower part of Court Street will be re resurfaced. We talked earlier this afternoon. Can you put a list together, I know you're busy, that what we talked about today about we submit some roads to, uh, to you uh, to get road construction, and then we're running into water mains and sewer mains that have to be replaced on these streets. Can we, as councilors, get a list of what you recommend uh, that would have to be changed because we don't want to submit a street uh, that has to have water or sewer uh, replacements? Everybody, like, like what Council President just uh, stated, that everybody's calling and a lot of people don't understand. And I know you're in front of us tonight for, a, uh, for the water issue, which will probably help that. No, no that's not on you tonight? Okay. The, uh, sorry. That's but right. uh, we, uh, when you come in front of us with the, uh, with the new water rates for a water increase, 
that will be implemented that we can get some of these streets resurfaced and, and water mains and pipes replaced? Correct. Um, okay. Councilor, there's, there's over 300 miles of road. It would be easier for you to submit it to me and then I can say, no, we cannot do that because there's water, sewer, or drain issues on that street. Some of these we are going to address through the water account if we can. We'll put new water, <coughs> new sewer if we have to, and then they'll get a new street. Well, I know we're going to be doing Tory chapter with this chapter 90 money. I cannot use any of this money right. for water and sewer. Right. I can use it for drainage. Right. So it's only used for drainage and uh, road reconstruction on the chapter 90 money. Right. Because I know the list came out. And it's, I believe you're going to be doing three streets with the with some of the pothole money. We also yes, yes. Could you? Well, since you're on TV now, I know the lower part of Court Street is one one of them to the Abington line from from Quincy Street. What is the other? Yes, we're doing the streets. We're doing mentioned. North Quincy Street from East Ashland to Regent Road. That's about 250 feet. We're doing Court Street from Cary to Kathleen. That's 100. Uh, that's 1,400 feet. East Ashland Street from Fay Road to Mass Ave. That's 820 feet. And we're doing Liberty Street from West Chestnut Street to the West Bridgewater Line. Okay. We're also doing, because we, we had that extra million dollars that um, Governor Baker gave us, um, we took 500000 of that. And we're also going to do Linwood Street from Berkshire to Colleen, Ash Street from Hillburg to Gordon. We're doing Court Street from LB Road to the Abington Line. It's a good stretch of street that we're doing on Court Street. Okay. So that's what we're doing with all the um, pothole money and the extra million or the half a million that we're going to use also to get all these done. The reason why we picked these streets is because of all the claims we were getting for potholes and whatever, so we can do a grind and overlay there, which is a lot cheaper than a total reconstruction of the road itself. <clears throat> okay. Well, just one, one other question. West Elm, where is that on? West Elm, it's funny you ask because the mayor asked me that last week. I was with the state people um, last week. They still haven't, aggregate industries won the bid. They still haven't offered out the, uh, the, the award. They said they were going to do it sometime this month. So I'm looking probably in June we're going to have a pre-construction meeting, I hope. Um, you can't push the state that much, but, um, and then we'll know more then. Okay. I'm going to recommend to them if they could just at least do a, a, a grind and overlay before they start doing all the infrastructure work. Yeah, that, that would help. That street's a mess. I understand. It, it, some of the roads are tough, but it's not just the city. It's everywhere. Yeah, I know. Thank you, Mr. Rowley. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you, Councilor Cruz. Well, thank you. Uh, actually, Mr. Councilor DiNapoli kind of took my thunder as I wanted to <laughs> check on the uh, upgrade and explain to the public that West Elm Street is not part of this Chapter 90 money, but a separate bid. That's correct. The state is coming in. That's all state money doing that road. All state money, and they still haven't signed. The, the bid has been awarded. Yes, it has. But it has not been signed I don't aggregate? I don't believe it has. It wasn't as of last week. Okay. Um, I can follow up on that anyway. The oh, mayor wanted I know me you've to find been, out uh, too. So. staying on top of it, but this, so the state, D, DP, uh, state highway has not signed a contract with them yet. Not yet, but the mayor just reminded me we have a meeting tomorrow with, with Mass DOT. We can ask then. Okay, because so, we do need to, yes, the public has a tough time. That street is so bad, but it's probably about, a, it's a two-year project, correct? Yes, it will be, yes. And It'll be just like Pleasant Street was. So. I mean, they, they do all their work, and then the, actually Pleasant Street will be done this Thursday. It'll be, it'll be finished. And actually, I guess I'll take a moment to let the public know if you give me some uh, I, I will, leeway there, Mr. President, leeway Chairman. Leeway Thank council, you. Yes. Uh, the, the, uh, if you go to the city website, uh, the public can see the detours that uh, we started this morning, and uh, uh, the side roads were quite a quite a speedway. Uh, the police chief has promised me he'll have uh, enforcement cars out tomorrow. Most of those uh, cars are out of town people trying to find their way around the detours, and there's uh, no regard for the uh, safety of the people in Brockton. But uh, uh, Pleasant Street for the next four days will be being blacktopped. That's and, correct. Uh, should be done after that. It should be done Thursday. Thursday, and uh, again, just uh, forewarned is forearmed. The police will be out tomorrow on those side roads with uh, enforcement vehicles. So uh, if you live in Brockton, you ha you've been warned. If you don't, too bad. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your Thank you, you Councilor. Any, uh, any other questions for the uh, 
for the commissioner in regards to recommend favorable. Second. 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 It's been made and seconded to send this back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council with a favorable recommendation. And we appreciate all that you're doing, uh, Commissioner, in regards to our streets because it's very important to all of us, as you know. Thank you. So we Thank appreciate you. everything you're doing. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Madam Clerk, item number 18. Order the DPW Commissioner be, is authorized to issue three single family sewer connections total, one to each of the following parcels ABC, Claremont Ave, formerly plots 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, Claremont Ave. Invited Lawrence Raleigh, DPW Commissioner. Mr. Chairman. Councilor Cruz. Uh, Councilor Cruz. I'm sorry. Councilor Dubois. I was I'm just looking sorry. at Councilor Cruz. So okay. that's funny that you Everybody said that. Everybody is. Um, I've already spoken with um, Commissioner Rowley about this issue because there's flooding down there and he said it isn't going to hurt any of the sewer interceptors. So I'm going to motion for a favorable recommendation. Second. 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 Motion's been made and second to send this back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor, as well. Uh, item number um, item number 19, Madam Clerk. Order that the City Council authorize the acceptance of two memorial benches for the DW Field Golf Course from DW Field Park Association to the City of Rockton Park Commission. All costs associated with this memorial bench, including installation, will be incurred by DP DW Field Park Association. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Timothy Carpenter, Park Superintendent. Mr. President, Council, uh, just one moment. There's a uh, just one moment, because there's a typo here, because it, it is supposed to be for DW Field Park, not for the golf course. Am I correct, Mr. Carpenter? That is correct. Yeah, so we need to, uh, we need to rectify that, which we'll rectify at uh, next uh, week's meeting as well, just so everybody knows that. Councilor Is it Dubois. too late to try to take number 19 and 20 collectively? Second. Motion's been made and second that we take item uh, 19 and 20 at the same time. All in favor? Opposed? We'll read number 20 as well, Madam Clerk. Order that the City Council authorize the acceptance of a memorial bench for the DW Field Golf Course from Dave Monahan to the City of Brockton Park Commission. All costs associated with this memorial bench, including installation, will be incurred by David, Dave Monahan. Moynihan. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conn, and Chief Financial Officer, and Timothy Carpenter, Park Superintendent. And this is correct, right? That is correct. Okay, this is correct. So you're, uh, go right ahead, Mr. Carpenter, in regards to both these items. All right, well, the first two benches for the DW Field Parks Association will, um, are scheduled to be installed, hopefully, on the south side of the tower, uh, up on Tower Hill, replacing the two that are existing there. Um, slightly engraved, uh, I believe one of them would say, uh, this bench donated by the DW Field Parks Association, the other one, would say this bench dedicated in memory of D.W. Field, the creator of this park. Um, and we don't have an inscription for the bench for the golf course, which is planned to go on the fifth tee. Motion we'll recommend favorably. Second. 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 Just, and just on that, uh, uh, Mr. Carpenter, these here are more like a slate type, not of, of wood. Is it different from? It's actually recycled plastic. Okay. Um, they have a Technically, they have a 50-year guarantee on them. That's what um, I was going to ask. And it's wrought iron um, arm rails, and they're about four feet long. Okay, great. Motion's been made and seconded to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council with favorable recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Uh, item number 21, Madam Clerk. I, I would like to take number 21 and 22 collectively and then ask to postpone them. Um, second. second. Well, wait a minute here. Number 21 is uh, is a different one. That's in regards to, okay, I got you. I'm sorry. I misunderstood what you're doing. Okay, I'd so like I'd, to take them collectively yep. and then um, postpone and we'll them postpone to July 20th. Them. Okay. Uh, you want to read items 21 and uh, 22? Second. Most of the main okay. second we take it collectively and read items 21 and 22. Order that the City Council of the City of Brockton petitions the Great and General Court under the provisions of Section 8 of Article 89 of the Amendments to the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for an act as follows. An act authorizing the City of Brockton to impose a local sales tax on certain sales of medical marijuana. Invited Michelle Dubois, Counselor. Order that the City Council Attorney is directed to explore and implement any and all legal strategies and filings to maintain and uphold the City Charter and City Ordinances as they relate to the affluent contract the mayor signed without council order or approval, invited Mark Gilday, Legislative Council. Council, is just uh, so we have it straight, these two items will be postponed until the finance meeting in July. That's during our summer session, so it will be the third Monday in July. All in favor of that? Opposed? Those two items are postponed until the uh, finance meeting in July. Thank you. 
Thank you, Council. Madam Clerk, item number 23. Resolve that the mayor be requested to appropriate money for a study of the Brockton Police Department staffing span of control and to provide recommendations for reducing supervisory positions within the department, increasing patrol officers. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial <coughs> Officer, and John Crowley, Police Chief. Mr. I believe um, Councilor Stewart was Mr. his Chairman, proposal. Chairman, this is Councilor Stewart. I'd make a motion to postpone. Second. second. Motion been made and seconded that we uh, postpone this and we'll hear this. We'll put it for the uh, finance meeting in uh, June, which would be the third Monday in June. Uh, on that, all in favor? Opposed? Goes to the June finance meeting. All in favor, opposed? It goes back to the full city council. Um, item number 24. Resolved that Mark Lind Mr. Mark Lindy, General Manager of Brockton Community Access, and a representative from Comcast come before the Finance Committee to discuss and explain the recent interruption to the live broadcast of the Brockton City Council meetings and on what corrective action is planned. Invited Mark Lindy, GM Brockton Community Access, Cather Catherine Maloney, Senior Manager, Comcast Cable Company. Mr. Chairman. Council Sullivan. Uh, I know Mr. Lindy is here, and uh, as you know, Councilors, I, I had filed this resolve. And let me be clear, I mean, we, the city of Brockton is, is lucky to have Mark Lindy and his staff at Community Access. Uh, Jay Miller's here as well. I mean, they go to every city event. I mean, if we're there, they're there. And they go to ones that we don't even appear at. So I, I'm, I'm not, you know, throwing down the gauntlet in any fashion to Brockton Community Access. I, I really have a question, and I'm, I don't think the Comcast individual's here. And uh, I know that Comcast has been working with Mr. Lindy. I'll let him talk. But what I'm disappointed about is that I'm getting calls after every Monday night meeting from constituents saying to me, how come we can't watch it live? We pay in Comcast, and if she was here, I'd say it, Comcast makes a ton of money off the customers here in the city of Brockton. So I'm trying to figure out how we can take a corrective action. I know Mark has invited and uh, m both Dennis and I to, to look at the wiring, and we will be doing that. But at the end of the day, um, the residents, the taxpayers, the constituents, they, they really owed this service. All of us are owed it. And uh, I know that Mark's uh, staff, they're here all the time. They, 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 they're working hard, but at the end of the day, it's not working. And I want to find out why. So with that, Mark, thanks for being here tonight. If you can share some enlightened, some information to us. Thank you, Councillor. I'm prepared to take any questions. Um, the majority of the problems have existed since the reconstruction of City Hall Plaza. I have dates and times and everything like that. Um, I will tell you that Comcast has been a willing partner. Um, if you read into the contract, the way it was signed in 2008, um, technically there are certain things they don't have to do but they've chosen to do it. And I don't want to say too much because I'm hoping to continue to get their cooperation. Um, above and beyond is what I would say. I'll, I'll let Kathy Maloney speak for herself, but I used to be in a position like that when I worked for the cable company before I came back to Brockton on my second go around with Brockton Community Access. Most of the problems started in July and August. There were four meetings in particular and during the summer, since the council and the FinCom are in summer session, you only have one meeting a month. We had problems in July and August. I believe at the time I may have told you, I think we got it licked. It was great. September and October, no issues. November 10th, which was the day before Memorial Day, it reappeared. Then December, January, and February, it was good. The difference in December, January, and February is there wasn't construction going on in, in the plazas because we had our, our snowstorms, okay? March, two meetings. April, three meetings out of four. May, one meeting, last week was good. I was praying to whatever God there was that tonight I wouldn't be scrambled or there wouldn't be issues. And lo and behold, it's okay. Um, originally, from what I understand, some of the fiber optic cables that come from the city council chambers or the city hall to BCA at one North Main Street, I'm gonna explain the path, were disturbed because they went through the area where the two bathrooms used to be over here and they weren't nicked or destroyed, but they were disturbed. And that's about as technical as I get being a non-technical person. The signal passes from here at City Council, City Hall. Um, the booth outside is what does all the meetings with, with my staff. Um, inside the building is coax cable. I can't tell you when it was put in. I'm gonna say it was rewired in about 1996 or 1997 when Jack Units was mayor. Outside, Comcast did, originally in the contract, a fiber, a coax fiber hybrid system, 
under the terms of the contract. That signal goes to our building. I'll tell you what we did there to try to correct some of these issues. Goes from that building to the Mary Baker School on Quincy Street, which has the signal processors owned by Comcast. From there, it goes to the head end on Crescent Street over near um, Dillon's Pub, and then it goes out to the residents. So you're talking here, BCA, Mary Baker School, Comcast head end, out to the residents. That's a pretty circuitous path Plus, it goes through a lot of different equipment, some of which we own and some of which Comcast owns. Now, what we did to try to solve the problem over here was replace the modulator, which sends out the signal, and the demodulator over at BCA to take a few pieces of equipment and change the equation. Not only did we replace it, but when we had some of the issues, Comcast provided us their loaner mod and demod to try to eliminate the problem. It did, and then it didn't. So it's back and forth. We're kind of at wit's end. We had an engineer come in, we put in a test monitor over at BCA that we always monitor to the signal from City Hall. We have color bars put up, and we can view them in our building. So if they're, the color bars are up and they're stable, everything's fine. When we see black or we see the color bars disappear and come back, we know there's a problem. We have a procedure, and Jay handles it for us with, with Aaron Tebow, who, who does our meetings. Every Monday, we come here at 2.15 for an hour to just check out the signal and work it out. Sometimes we've come here, the signal's been stable. We go back, drive to BCA, which isn't too far, look at the signal, and it's bad again. Come mm. back, try to resolve it. Um, like I said, wit's end. So we called Comcast in, we called uh, uh, an engineer that we hired at our expense to come in and try to resolve it. And like I said, I think I told you at least on two occasions that we had it licked. Didn't. So that's what's gone on to date. Um, now, what do I suspect could be the problem? Um, we haven't replaced every single piece of equipment we own. Okay, we could do that. I'm not sure that that would solve the problem. I think the cable inside this building, mid-90s, at some point should be considered to be replaced right. with fiber cable. On their dime? No, it Why would not? be on our dime. Under the terms of the contract. No, when, when is the contract up? The contract is up in 2018, April, April, March 31st, 2018. So the contract is now entering the three year window for the renewal. The mayor is the issuing authority. Uh, you had two appointments before you tonight for members of the Cable Advisory yep. Board to work on the contract renewal. So there will be things probably asked of Comcast. Comcast will ask things to the city. They'll, you know, who knows what they're looking for. I, I think we have strong yep. support from the council and the mayor here to continue our mission. Okay, but that is the time to ask for upgrades. Last time around, it was like a little bit of a retreat in terms of what was offered, okay? We, we, we started out with contract one with about 250 locations around the city that could be hooked up for live. The second contract went down to 100. The third contract went down to 50, okay? Every municipal building in the city is connected to the INET, but the INET's kind of been bypassed because the city's built its own network, so it's not as used as it was under the terms of the first contract. This first contract started in 81, so we're now about 35. First contract was 15 years, second contract was 10. This current contract we're in is in year seven. So that's something that I would certainly recommend to the Cable Advisory Board, to the mayor, that gets looked into for the contract. We, we handle the production of the broadcast. If you notice that on all the repeats of the city council meeting, the picture's clear, the sound is good. The only issue we have is these windows in this council chamber are, have always been an issue. At some point in time, I'd love to have a conversation with somebody to put what's called a neutral density filter on the window, which takes outside light and mixes it with inside light, and then it doesn't look like it's all blown out and too bright, and, or you guys end up with orange faces because outside light and inside light don't mix on TV. So there's, there's a lot we could do to improve, but in the meantime, now, there hasn't been any, I don't know what today, I, I wasn't over here myself today, but I don't know whether there was construction or reconstruction. The plaza is expanding in terms of where the construction's being done, like it's over towards the Crescent Street side, and that's not where the cable lines are. 
the cable lines go from here out to um, School Street. So we didn't experience the issue today. We didn't experience it last week. The night you're talking about that I think you filed the resolve over <coughs> is I had talked to Council President An Anieri um, on one occasion that there was a, a problem and I anticipated it would be bad and we made a joint decision together not to take the meeting off the air, but it was so bad that we should have, but we didn't. And then the next meeting we looked at that and, and, and I made the decision myself told Aaron, take it off, because it's just so bad, it'll be on repeat. We added a couple of extra repeats to the, to the mix. There wasn't a school committee meeting that, that week. We also, since Mayor Carpenter took office, all the meetings are on TV within 72 hours on the city website. So anybody that, even if they don't have cable TV, can access the meeting and watch it. It is not, I will grant you, it's not the same as going live or being live, okay? But it's still, multiple times, eight, 10, 12 times. Yeah, I mean, it's an avenue, but that's not the avenue that the residents want right. and what they deserve. And, and you know, I, I negotiated a contract with Comcast, um, and it took about eight sessions for another municipality. There was three of us at the table, mm -hmm. and we pretty much got what we wanted. So at the end of the day, I mean, it's 2018, um, but they make a lot of money here in Brockton, a lot of money. So I think a good business partner would f f have some type of corrective action. I mean, again, I'm gonna be clear about it. I mean, what you guys, you guys and gals, your staff, outstanding. But the fact is, I'm disappointed, and I know the residents, a lot of the seniors in the high rise, and you're disappointed, Mark. I mean, mm -hmm. that's not what we pay for, you know? And, and it's a pass-through, and at the end of the day, Comcast should be somehow accommodating. Uh, and they're not here tonight, right? Mm -hmm. So that's upsetting to me as well, because I know we continued it last, last, uh, Last, last finance, Mr. Chairman, because the Correct. individual couldn't be here. I don't know how that's a good business partner. With that, Mark, I want to thank you, uh, and, and I am going to uh, make a motion at the end after my colleagues speak to postpone it because I do want the Comcast individual to come here. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilors, Councilor Cruz. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Mr. Lindy. Um, ballpark, to rewire the building, we're talking $10,000, $100,000, bucks. Um, I, I couldn't really has it a guess at that it's not going to be inexpensive when we wired you say it, not going to be inexpensive inex, it's not going to be inexpensive when we rewired uh, we spent for the coax back in 96 or 98 I believe it was close to four thousand dollars at the time that was coax fiber is infinitely more expensive <coughs> than coax now fiber is also infinitely better correct much better okay um, there are other ways to transport the signal, but it kind of defeats the whole purpose of having a cable system if you then go and use like the internet to, I know that's not your question, but just to mm. digress a little bit, if we use the internet to broadcast, not broad cable cast, whatever we want to call it, it kind of defeats the purpose of having a network all set up that is part of the, part of the cable system. Correct, I agree with that. Um, now, you said there are other, that the other city buildings are wired for uh, the, the tell me what you said on that school oh. buildings are wired uh, the four original junior high schools are wired um, for each, live broadcast yeah if you go into west it's which you're the most familiar with because it's yeah. in ward one it's there's a there's a box to the right of the auditor of, of the stage where there's a live cable drop when when mayor units was mayor and he did some of his town meetings we actually there. sent some of those out live but we're the only th only political entity that's broadcast live correct school correct. committee so the school committee could but could but uh, various superintendents over the years weren't too thrilled to death about that as were certain members of the committee some folks said the meetings would be lengthened because they were on TV but they're on not TV. Not because we want, it's not be, I would love it live. As they're a still on of, TV, but they are on TV. They're, they're on not a, broadcast they're on a live. 24 hour delay. Right. And then there are other groups that meet, like um, the planning board meets in the GAR room, which is another difficult room to record in, be, again, because of the windows. But if, uh, if, if you're talking about open government transparency and stuff like that, if you have a, a situation, something that we'd, we'd love to explore is like if, if a government body met in the public library in the town of Canton, the public library <coughs> is used as a meeting room. And there is a cable set up over there. Okay, the schools would be more for just than the school committee meeting. It could be used by drama to record kids, not to put them on TV because you can't because of copyright, but you could use them for educational or um, critique purposes. So you could, you know, 
help the kids or if there's an event that happens in the auditorium. There hasn't been a lot of call for live. Live is the most and fun thing for me, it's kind of an adrenaline rush. You gotta get it right, you gotta, you know, and, you, and, and, and it, it's exciting, live television. See, we're different from broadcast. Broadcast, you put up a satellite dish and you can send a live signal anyway. Cable works through the cable. But you don't edit any of the political. We don't, we don't edit a, a, them at all. We do gavel to gavel, we pride ourselves on that and we don't particularly like when other people take your meetings and, and edit them. Well, and in fact, I'll just ask uh, Mr. Zioli this, but the, the disc is actually the minutes of the meeting. Yeah, we, we actually help with the re recording. We do a second In the DVD. old days, they actually used to do a cassette recording. It's audio cassette, correct. But now th this is the actual... Um, so, yeah, I mean, I can't imagine that we'd want uh, any of those political entities uh, edited. Nope. Um, it, but the schools could be live, but they choose not to. School committee meetings. Correct. Well, that's interesting. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Councillor DiNapoli, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Mr. Lindsay, good evening. Good evening. Um, my question is about the cost of replacing the cable in this building. You, 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 we don't have any idea what it costs, right? But if I can recall, your, your budget is what, 400,000 a year? 675. 675,000. Correct. Okay. How much of that six? We see we we never get any fig, actually figures exactly what we're what you spend. Okay, I've been here for 16 years, and I still don't have any idea. But oh. that's beside the point. How much? Why would it be a problem if you have six hundred thousand dollars and you spend, let's say? Two or three or four in a year. I'm sure you don't. Sp I'm sure you don't spend a half a million dollars a year in your budget. We can I answer that? Yes. Okay. We the budget was set for eight years at five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. When Mayor Carpenter came into office, he actually brought it up during the campaign and talked about the funding from Comcast not going to us, and he increased that line item. It was in last year's budget that the city council passed. Um, we spent every bit of the 550. We actually dipped into what we had for reserve, which we don't have because the license, last license wasn't renewed on time, and we spent our entire reserve to operate for a year and a half when the license went into kind of overtime. The new 675 figure, we have about 600 of it allocated and about 50,000 for a reserve because if we don't have any reserve and one of the checks, the checks go through the city of Brockton, they go through the mayor's office, we request the funding and under this administration that money has always been forthcoming but in, in the past we've had issues where we didn't get a check for three months and then we literally were down at the end of the barrel and we didn't do it. Capital monies have been handled differently. There's the revolving fund that was set up. I believe Councilor Sullivan filed that resolve in 2007 and there's a revolving fund where the capital monies come from and then we go to the mayor's office for that. Now our, our budget and our monies, we file a 990 PF every year that's an IRS form that's totally public and we file a public charities report that's totally public and those reports are submitted to the assessor's office every year because we go for, a, we're a nonprofit so we go for a tax abatement on the building. So all of those numbers are 100% totally public. Okay, yeah, but you bought a lot of you bought a lot of equipment within the last two years. You made a lot of upgrades within the last year, specifically. Well, last year, right? <clears throat> okay, so that's where some of the capital money has gone to. Correct? See, we we don't see <clears throat> us spending the money on cabling anything because I I do agree with Councillor Sullivan that that should be something that's asked for from the cable company in the contract. I mean, the cameras in the room the switching equipment, the equipment at BCA, hopefully at some point down at, at the little theater at Brockton High, um, the portable equipment that's used, the van, all of that, that would come out of the capital money. But for a good eight years, we didn't really get any capital money. The last capital money I got prior to Mayor Carpenter was under Mayor Harrington in 2009. Mo Moses was in the mayor's office as <coughs> the, um, the, the, the cable liaison and and right before Mayor Harrington left office, we got money for, for four years. We didn't get a dime in capital. 
I remember that. Moses did a great job at that. When I Thank called. You. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> how many how many people do you have a, a, are on your payroll? Five full time staff and, how many and part three part time staff. So you have eight people. Yes. Okay. I can give you more information any time, Council. All right. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, I know the mayor is using uh, a portion of your f money to pay one of his employees in his office, but you know, I mean, I, I think. First of all, these cameras are old, and they should be upgraded. And, uh, you know, we, like what Councilor Sullivan says, the signals, sometimes when you're watching it, it you're rolling the dice, it looks it's ter it's terrible. You can't watch it at all, you know? I don't disagree with you. And we don't like throwing anybody under the bus, but no. it's, somebody, somebody has to be responsible for this. I, and I know all you do is put it out. Right. You know, and it's up to, I think it's up to Comcast to do it. They, it you know, it's something that's I'm the problem with having only one cable company in town. I'm sure there's, there's fiber optics in this area from Verizon. Both of the previous mayors have tried to get Verizon to come in here. They don't want to And Verizon in doesn't want to come no. in because Brockton is a poorer city and only 60% of the people have cable. It's only a 60% cable penetration. Is it still it's that high with the satellite dishes? It, believe it or not, it stayed about the same for the number of subscribers, amazingly so to me, um, because there are a lot of dishes. If you drive around, there's an awful lot of dishes here. Okay, what's going on now, if you look at what uh, HBO is doing, they're getting ready to launch, they've launched an internet platform where you can just get HBO without even going to cable and um, ESPN is looking to do that right now and Verizon, I mean, Verizon's doing it, kind of doing an a la carte and they're suing Verizon for taking ESPN off the platform. Yeah. So cable in the next, we have a contract for three years. After that three years are up, Cable is going to be a totally different landscape. There are a lot of young people that just don't have it and don't feel that they can afford it because the price is so high. If you package it, you have a temporary rate, and then after that, the temporary rate goes away and you're paying the full bill. Do you have the capability of Skyping your signal? Um, Skype has some technical flaws with it, but you can Skype it. Is that equipment expensive? Um, I think it, it – I, I don't think – people would like it because it's kind of like, uh, the only way I could explain it is Japanese Gila monsters, where if you're talking right now, you <sighs> would have a little bit of a pause and a delay, and it, it, it's, it's not perfected. They're, yeah, because they're, it has to travel a little great distance. It's going through basically the internet and in, in kind of a wireless platform, yeah. and it's not as good as a wire. Councils, you're losing me in a lot I'm of this the, I'm sorry so. I lost you, Mr. Yeah, President. You, you did. Did. I, Mr. I, I Lindy, thank you Jennifer. very much. Okay, you're welcome. thank you. Councilor Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Don't worry, he lost me as well, too. Yeah. So I just watched Channel new. 4, 5, and 7. That's about it. Yeah, so. did you? <laughs> uh, High speed. Good evening, Mr. Lindy. How good are evening. you? I'm great. How are you? No, I just want, I wanted to ask you if you know um, basically what, the, uh, what was the, um, the annual receipt last year from Comcast's uh, cable subscribers to the city of Brockton? I, I do not get that information. That goes straight to the mayor's office. So you don't know what the, the, the lump sum? No, it's 4% it's of gross uh, subscriber revenues. I know that. I'm just saying, so you don't, you don't have an idea what the lump sum total for the year was? I do not. Okay. And you're, I just want to make sure that, you know, we're clear about one thing. Um, I was in the uh, Harrington administration when we negotiated this contract, and there was, I can tell you personally, that I had many, many sleepless nights because we actually hired an outsider's attorney to do the work, and it, believe it or not, it became part of my duties and obligations to basically negotiate that contract from point A to point B. There was one time I could recite you just about every single page because I had to kind of rework at the whole thing, and to be honest with you, I think that contract was the, one of the better contracts that we've had in the city for the longest time. Not because I had something to do with it, because if you remember, on the last three years of the contract that we had prior to that, your annual payments was how much? The last three years of the last contract were 313, because the first seven years were originally four and a quarter, but we elected to 
get more to the 500,000 so we could, because we were afraid the cable company was going to change hands, that it was going to go from then Continental Cablevision, it went to AT&T, then to Media One, and then it became Comcast. So but, under under Mayor Units, it was, it was considerably less. And then well, I wanted to, well, I wanted to make sure that at least it's clear that it was not for the lack of effort, at least from that administration, because you know very well mm -hmm. how long it took to negotiate that contract and the, uh, the arm twisting that went into, into play in the sense to make sure that the city and the citizens got the best deal that they got. As a matter of fact, we were able to redo all the cameras in this room. Um, through this new contract, including the television that's above the door mm -hmm. that replaced this, the, the little box that we had on top of the, uh, uh, of the transmission uh, area. So the reason why the, the contract was negotiated the way it was negotiated, where a certain percentage went to BCA and another percentage went to the city directly, it was so that when we ran into some issues in terms of what else we need to do in terms of um, augmenting the, the cable capabilities in the city that we actually had some funds to operate and funds to work with. That being said, that number was set around 25% of the total budget, mm -hmm. meaning that if you're getting $650,000, I'm assuming that that other 25% is gotta be around at least $100,000. Safe to say? <clears throat> I don't have the figures directly from Comcast. Under the old it, contract, it, we did get direct copies of what went to the city, and it, it stopped under the previous administration. Previous I, administration, I not the Harrington administration. I remember when, when I was in the Harrington administration, we furnished you with those papers. I know you did. So what I'm saying is that you are getting a certain amount, which is a percentage of the total amount that's coming into the city. Correct which means that if we need to rewire this entire building, there should be enough funds somewhere to pay for the rewiring of this, of this building, which is not necessarily the responsibility of Comcast, because Comcast is responsible for the wires outside of a building, not necessarily inside of a building, correct? Depends on what the city asks them to do. The, the mayor is the issuing authority, and the cable advisory board would say to Comcast, this is what we want you to do. Um, it was kind of shifted to the city back under one of the previous contracts, the modulators, the demodulators, the wiring, that was all Comcast responsibility under contract number one. Contract number two, it got shifted back a little bit more to the city and then contract three, believe it or not, it was even more so. They didn't even want to do the modulators and the demodulators. To me, I'm not in the signal business, we're in the programming business. And it's kind of tough because, quite honestly, I'd need an a, a, someone with an engineering degree to be, because you're talking RF signal, you're talking things that are outside of my, my scope. And uh, to have somebody on board, they, they technically don't even have to measure the levels, but yet they have, and they've been very cooperative. They were cooperative when you were there, and they've been very cooperative, especially the last, because you got them to be cooperative. They weren't they became cooperative because they were up for renewal at the time. And now that they're up for renewal again, I'm sure they're gonna be. I, I mean, we have a good rapport with Comcast. I think it's better than it was over the years. And uh, I know we're just entering the new stage now where as you see the activity with the Cable Advisory Board picking up again, I'm sure there'll be more information forthcoming. I just, I can't give you costs on wiring or anything like that or, or figures that I don't have. No, no, but what I'm saying, uh, Mr. Lindy, is the fact that if Comcast or the subscribers of, uh, of cable in the city of Brockton are paying a fee mm -hmm. for services, yes, and it's the subscribers that actually pay that fee, and it's the same subscribers that are sitting home watching the, the council's meeting mm -hmm. that's not going to them because, and they don't care that you know I don't have an engineering degree or you don't have one. The fact is they're paying for their cable and they're hoping to see their, their council meeting or their government meeting mm -hmm. in, in action in the sense. So, and you said earlier that it's, you're not looking at this thing costing an arm and a leg in the sense just to do the rewiring in this building. 
if it's not fiber. If it's fiber, I have no idea what the cost of fiber is. We just got some Is there any way you could, within the next, let's say, several several months, but you know, going into the summer, maybe the back end of the summer, come back to this body with the with an estimate or what it what would it cost to redo this building and then let us work with the mayor and and the issuing authority to make sure that the funds that are supposed to be used for cable and cable augmentation gets used for cable and cable augmentation? I will be willing to work with whoever I can to get that information for you. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Council. Council Azak. Good evening, Mr. Lindy. Thank Good you evening. for being here tonight. Um, I have a two-part question. First off, would rewiring the building, would, is that a guaranteed or is it? I think it's, it's a partial guess on my part because as I explained, where the signal has to travel and we're doing reconstruction, luckily downtown is under reconstruction with Pleasant Street. All the downtown wiring is underground, okay? At one point in time, we had a water main break that pretty much destroyed our basement and our building. Okay, we did make sure with Comcast that we didn't lose any wiring. I had to redo an elevator, all that stuff. But um, I think there's a whole bunch of areas that we could look in. I have no idea what the integrity of the signal processes are at the Mary Baker School and how old they are. We don't own them. Those aren't ours. Those are Comcast's, okay? The equipment in the head end, we also don't own. That's Comcast. So that's why I think Councilor Sullivan brought back <coughs> you know, ask for myself and a representative from Comcast because they could do that. I would obviously want to see if Comcast would be the partner to do that wiring. Perhaps too, the city has some expertise now in doing fiber optic wiring. We, we have a wonderful IT department that we work in conjunction with that serves the city. Um, I would like, and there's a whole I, there's an IT committee, maybe it, that's a place to, to go speak with as well and find out some more information. But I, I, no, I don't think you, I, see that's what I'm worried about. We started replacing equipment and we started getting test equipment and we thought it made the situation better and it, and, and it, and, and it came back again. Okay. I, I, trust me, I don't want to be here. Um, I don't mind talking to any of you and I, I, it's a pleasure to be here. but. When I look at that TV and it's not working and I'm home, I'm cringing. I'm on the text with my technician or I get in my car and I drive down here or we go to the building. I have someone back at the building tonight just in case there's an issue here tonight. But after a certain time in the day, we don't have access to Comcast. So if the live signal goes down, they don't have the technicians to, to, to do what needs to be done to get it back on the air. Thank you. Um, the next part of my question, actually, I've had a, a few constituents contact me. I have a, many constituents in high rises. Is there any way, and I, I don't, I'm not sure if you were working on it or not, but possibly um, getting them like a group rate, getting they, a lot of them are elderly and they'd like maybe a, a little bit of a break on their um, I don't want to answer on behalf of Comcast because that's a rate issue, but when I did work for the cable company and I was regional <coughs> program director, the senior rate is something that does get negotiated in, in terms of the contract, and, and, and Moses remembers that particularly well because basically Comcast at the time said if we lower the rate for seniors, we're going to make it up with everybody else. So you're going to get a discount, and it was something that um, rate regulation, I believe, is not allowed under the FCC Cable Act in terms of rates. That's, that's an, I would think it's a negotiating point with Comcast. Okay, so is that on their part or could we do that? It would be the city, to, the I mean, city. however the mayor, mayor directs the Cable Advisory Board to proceed, um, I, I would definitely want you to bring that up with, with the issuing authority. Definitely, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Councilors. Uh, <clears throat> just a comment on that as well. I mean, everybody needs to understand that, that the Cable Advisory Board, in a, and correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, it is all based upon, you know, them meeting with the mayor and the mayor deciding, whomever the mayor is, to what direction that he or she wants to take that or take cable throughout the city. That's what it all comes down to, correct. pretty much. Not correct. so much us as a council. We don't have control over that, any contract in the city. But that's what, that's what it's based upon. And I'm sure with a lot of the things that have been raised here this evening, I think that's what you're going to see happening with 
of the Cable Advisory Board over the next year or two is when the contract is obviously up for negotiation. These are the things that are going to be raised, no doubt about it. So and there should be public hearings that exactly there are public place ascertainment and things like that, right. so the public will get to come. Exactly, exactly. Council Sullivan, Mr. Chairman, a couple of things. I just want to follow up on on Council Rodriguez, uh, Mr. Lindy. If possible, I think I think Moses came up with a great idea, but I, I'd like to actually hone that scope a little bit. I'd like to see if we could get those figures before we go into budget. It would give us about three weeks because I think it'd be really important to know what that cost estimate is and uh, hopefully Comcast will be able to work with you on that. But uh, with that being said, I also, before I make a motion because Ms. Maloney's not here, I also want to thank uh, Jay Miller for being here who's also a new dad. So Jay, congratulations. <laughs> with that being said, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to continue this to the next uh, FinCom in June. Second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. This will be uh, continued to our June FinCom meeting. All in favor? Opposed? Goes to our June FinCon meeting. Thank you, and thank, thank you, you Mr. Lindy, for uh, being here this evening. We have um, item number 25. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Councilor. I believe the item we stepped over before, uh, the ready. appointment to the Cable Advisory Board, I believe he's here now. Yes, uh, I believe he is as well, and that 11. was, uh, we can go back to that. That was item number 11, Madam Clerk, if you would read that one. Appointment, Mozart St. Cyr Brockton as a member of the Cable Advisory Board for a three-year term ending May 2018, invited Mozart St. Cyr. Good evening, Mozart. How are you? Good evening, everyone. Nice to see you. Anything you'd like to say before the uh, council this evening? Um, I just would like to thank all of you guys for the opportunity to be a member of the board of the Cable Advisory Board. Very good. Councilors? Mr. Chairman. Councilor Cruz. Can you just make sure and get senior discounts? Uh, cable, uh, we want <laughs> files, we want everything. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Councilor DiNapoli. Good evening. Congratulations. Uh, you, you probably were, were listening to part of this conversation. Yes, I was. Okay, and I'm sure you have cable yourself. Yeah, I do. So make sure you have a real sharp pencil when you get negotiated. <laughs> I've been thinking about good, that. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Councilor. Motion to recommend favor. Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. goes back to the full City Council. All in favor? Opposed? goes back to the full City Council with a favorable recommendation. That will be heard next uh, Tuesday evening, so good luck. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. We go back to um, item number 25. Resolved that the City Council hereby request that a representative and or representatives of Aquarius appear before the Finance Committee to address questions pertaining to the desalinization water contract. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Philip Nazarella, City Solicitor, Moses Perriante, General Manager, Aquaria Water, Linda Coria, Project Manager, Aquaria Water. Councilors, again, this is an item we keep postponing, so what you What's the status here, Councilors? Mr. Chairman. Councilor Cruz. Before we postpone, I mean, I, I'm sure we will because we have nobody from Aquaria. I'd like to ask Mr. Nezzarella a question. Sure. If I could. Yep, we can. Attorney Nezzarella. I think I'm, I know what you're going to say, but I still want to ask it. Their basic refusal to come before us, can that be considered a breach of their responsibility of, uh, of, uh, I don't think of so. marketing? I don't think so. So we have no way to make them come in? Well, not that way. I mean, I don't think the contract obligates them to come before you. They have a binding, con they have a binding contract. They believe they're fulfilling their end of it, and there's no obligation on their part in the contract. But if they can't come and tell me they fulfill that, I think it's a pretty safe assumption that they haven't. I don't know if it's a safe assumption. Uh, if if nobody can come and tell me that they've done their job, I think it's a pretty safe assumption that we could say, well, fine, then we're not going to pay you. The end of this. Yeah. <laughs> if nobody from there can come and tell me what they've done. I bet you'd show up in a hurry if you didn't pay them. So, uh, you know, if, if, if I, as the uh, person that's buying from them, says, all right, come and tell me if you did what you said and they refuse to come tell me, I think it's a pretty safe assumption that uh, how we've been hearing it for the last couple of weeks is generally uh, probably a little bit of proof that they haven't done it. Uh, I forget how else Goodell said it, but uh, well, how, how, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I could make a pretty safe assumption that they haven't done their job if they're afraid to come tell me what, what they've done. And I can tell it's going to be rhetorical because you're not going to say we... Well, I, in all due respect, Council, you, you're making a statement which I'm listening to, and I don't think calls for response, so I'm, I'm just... Well, my, my question is, 
you don't think that's, that that can be assumed, that they haven't done their job if they can't tell us what they've done? I don't like to make assumptions. Exactly. I don't like to pay for things that nobody's told me that they've done. And in the absence of them coming and refusing to come and tell me what they've done, and I speak in the empirical w me, no, and I think, all of us. And I understand the basis of the assumption. I think it's a fair you know, basis from which you have it. It's just that I can't take the leap and make the assumption that they've breached the contract. But I can certainly understand and share in the frustration that council may have in the, the uh, uh, lack of response or uh, supplementing if the we were to hold a payment, have. If we were to hold a payment, what does the contract say? If we were to withhold payment, put it in escrow. What does the contract say? What's, is it a penalty? Is there? Well, since seeing we're talking assumptions, I'd be more comfortable saying I could assume that that's a breach of the contract on our part. To withhold payment. So it would be a double breach? Well, it would be a breach on our part. Again, your assumption is they've already breached. Well, if we breach, what's the, what's the penalty they can do to us? They could sue for the money. Okay. Well, we, I'm saying we put it into an escrow account till they come and pick it up here at the council meeting. <laughs> I'll hold on to the check. I, I mean, clearly they have, and I'm not big on this, but it's, they have no respect for this, this body. And they don't care because there seems to be no downside for them. So I'm saying, why don't we hold the payment? We'll tell them we have the check. Come pick it up. Come pick it up any other Monday night at 8 o'clock. Uh, do it on the finance, so it's 7 o'clock. Well, I think we may want to probably chat about that in a little more detail. Before Is there, does the contract specify how we have to pay them? I, I don't have the contract in front of me. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure it does specify the, the payments <laughs> and also the failure of the payments, <laughs> penalties, interest, et cetera. But does it say that it has to be mailed to them? Does it have to be? Can we say they have to come pick it up? I don't think it says they have to come at a city council meeting to pick it up. Well, we have to do something. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Well, Chairman, you, Councilor. Councilor Sullivan. as you may recall, I, I originally filed this exact resolve over three years ago, three and a half years ago. Uh, that legislative session died. Uh, new councilors got elected to join us here in the council. I filed it again last, uh, last year. Uh, the individual came before us one time, ill-prepared, had no information whatsoever, stood up there like Mickey the Dunce, not saying any, anything to us with any substance whatsoever. The individual that night stated he would come back. Sure, I'll come back next meeting. Well, that was over a year ago. And uh, I actually woke up this morning kind of happy because we didn't get the last minute 8 o'clock email last night saying that they wouldn't come. They actually did it better. They didn't email us at all. They just didn't show up tonight. Uh, so I am going to postpone this uh, until July. Uh, and why July? Uh, because we're going to have the budget in June. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, they'll wake up by that time. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to make a motion to continue to the FinCom in July. Second. 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 Motion has been made and seconded that this item will be continued to our finance uh, meeting in July. All in favor? Opposed? It goes to the July uh, FinCom meeting, which will be the third Monday in July. Item number 26. I'm going to make a motion uh, collectively, 26, 27, if we could, Mr. Chairman. Motion has been made and seconded. Second. We take items 26 and 27 collectively. All in favor? Opposed? We'll take them collectively, Madam Clerk. Resolved that the mayor, city solicitor, and the chief financial officer be invited to appear before a committee of this council to review the legal and financial implica implications of the city's contract with Aquaria. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conn, chief financial officer, Philip Nazarella, city solicitor, Moises Pariente, general manager, Aquaria Water, Linda Coria, pro project manager, Aquaria Water. Resolved that the mayor and the city solicitor be invited to appear before this finance committee to discuss the existing contractual agreement with Aquaria and how to ensure communication from Aquaria to the city and the city council, given the difficulty the city council has encountered in having an Aquaria representative be appear before the council. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Philip Nazarella, city solicitor, Moises Pariente, General Manager, Aquaria Water, Linda Coria. Project Manager, Aquaria Water. Mr. Chairman. Council Sullivan. Make a motion, uh, both 26-27, postponed to the FinCom in July. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Both those items will be postponed until our July FinCom meeting. All in favor? Opposed? Goes to our July uh, meeting, uh, 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 FinCom meeting. Thank you. Uh, item number 28, um, Madam Clerk. Resolved that the con 
that Congressman Lynch come before a committee of this council to give a Washington, D.C. update. Invited Stephen Lynch, Congressman. I would, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Councilor DiNapoli. Uh, Councilor Barnes is not here, and uh, she uh, filed this resolve. We'll, uh, we should uh, postpone this item until probably the next Finance Committee meeting. Probably. Which would be our third Monday in June. June. Would be our June meeting. Second. 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 Second that Which motion. has been made and second that we postpone this item to our June FinCom meeting. All in favor? Opposed? That goes to our uh, June meeting. Councilors, um, just a couple of things before I take any other questions concerned councilors have. As you know, next Monday is Memorial Day, uh, May 25th, so that's a holiday, and as you know, we'll be having the holiday parade at, uh, at 10 o'clock, as Mr. Farrell mentioned while he was here. So our meeting will be Tuesday, May the 26th, um, right here in the uh, council chambers at 8 p.m. Also, I'll have um, some further discussion uh, tomorrow when I meet with the mayor. Uh, I still believe we're on target to have the budget um, ready by uh, Friday the 22nd now again I say Friday the 22nd when it, it should be completed and I'm going to talk to him about uh, the fact that if it is completed and, and in the books and bound and ready for us to see whether or not they can be hand delivered I'll have to find that out from him if not I'll make sure that they're on your desk so that you come in Tuesday evening uh, at our meeting the 26th they'll be here in front of us I'm still looking to do budget hearings the first week in June which would be one two three and four uh, if anybody feels um, that you can't make that schedule, then let me know because I think that's the way we've been trying to keep it over the last several years. I'm following a little bit of the same schedule that's been followed the last couple of years, even uh, from Council Cruz and even when Council Sullivan were, uh, were president as well. So I just want to keep you on, on track to that. Now, if something changes and there's some items per se in the budget because of financial um, constraints or items or how they're piecing the budget together and it, it is not going to be ready for the, uh, the 22nd um, then I would let you know we may have to bounce to that second week in June but uh, hopefully I don't think we're going to have to uh, do that um, because when you get the budget book be right up front with you it's going to be as lean 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 as it can ever be I think everybody knows that um, I've met with the mayor several times in regards to it uh, they were still I think they even met today again uh, they were they were at the table uh, trying to come up with every way and every avenue that they can because we have a great shortfall there and that shortfall is uh, caused from a lot of what happened this winter and of course uh, a lot of uh, shortfall as well from the fact of um, how spending was in the course of the the last past year and I would uh, say, and this is only my own opinion, that I, I think, you know, eyes are open to the fact that everything's going to be used to balance this next coming budget. And I think, uh, and I know he's just left the room, but I think the mayor realizes as well to what he may have to do to balance this coming budget, whether he wants to do it or not. And I'll leave that phrase out so you, you can piece that together. We've been here long enough, uh, all of us together. But in any case, um, I'm just keeping it hand to what's going on with the budget and uh, have a greater handle on that uh, as, as the week unfolds. Council Azak. Mr. Chairman, I'd like a moment of personal privilege. Go ahead. Um, I'd like to congratulate all the Brockton High School students, teachers, and faculty, and uh, all the volunteers that helped put the musical on this past weekend. They did an amazing job. It was absolutely beautiful, and congratulations to all of them on a job well done. They put on um, Anything Goes, which was very entertaining. I saw my colleague, Councillor Cruz, there yesterday, so it was um, just Wonder. I can't say enough about it. And lastly, I'd like to um, wish my sister a happy birthday, Joyce Azak. Her birthday's today, so couldn't celebrate with her, but I figured I'd wish her a happy birthday. There you go. Well, happy, happy, sis happy birthday, sister, right? There you right. go. Council Sullivan. Mr. Chairman, a moment of personal privilege. Yes, uh, right. Those of us that sit on the ordinance committee, please be reminded, as chair, I'm calling an ordinance meeting uh, May 27th. Uh, it will be at 6 o'clock here in the chamber, so if you could put that down May 27th. I also want to wish a happy birthday to a Ward 1 constituent whose birthday uh, was last week, William Sullivan. My son, Will, hit the ripe old age of three. So he better be asleep right now, but happy birthday, William. There you go. Happy birthday. Any other? Uh, Chairman, Council no, no. Studinsky. Please, uh, I just want to invite any councilor that is free, Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. at the Cape Cod Cafe, there's a group from out of Taunton that wants to come in and take over the uh, foundry land, which is down East Union Street, uh, and uh, run a business out of there. I'm told that it, uh, it fits into the industrial mode, but it doesn't emit anything that's a problem. So they want to meet with the different residents, let them know what they are, who they are. And uh, Mr. Leonard, uh, the downtown guy, is going to go a little bit south, and he'll be there. And uh, Gordon Carr, I believe, is going to be there from uh, B21. Uh, so the council is uh, 6 p.m. Cape Cod Cafe. Be worth going by, and that's 4A. 
It's down the fight and forth. Thank you, Mr. That's great. Chairman. Thank you, Council. Thank you for the information. Anything else, uh, Councilors, to come before us this evening? Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>